Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, here we are headed towards the end of January. It's just hard to believe how quickly time is flying this year. I'm excited about the opportunities that exist. I know many of you have contacted me about events and activities that you have planned for the spring, and I'm excited to see that so many are venturing out there. Um, on one hand, there's a great need uh, to continue to fund the efforts that you're doing, but on the other hand, uh, you also are just stepping out, uh, many by faith, to uh, believe that uh, it might even be a little semblance of a wanting to get back to normal, and uh, that's why many of you are venturing out into uh, doing events, act activities, and meeting with individual donors. Certainly, many of you have let me know about your frequent communication, your contact with your uh, partners and your donors related to direct mail, direct marketing, and putting out there uh, much of the communication that you're doing right now. So I'm excited for you. Uh, if you aren't already a subscriber to this channel, we would love to have you. We are really building momentum now with so many of you. We're starting to, uh, many of you are seeing the value of this community, are communicating with each other, and are beginning to learn from the materials in these videos and on all of our, our channels and platforms that we're using. Many of you have let me know how you've just really enjoyed our resources that we're putting out on other platforms as well too. Uh, some of you have mentioned how you like the three suggestions and tips that I put out on Monday that help you for the coming week, uh, that you also enjoy on Thursday the new series that we started, which is uh, Thursday morning quick tips with Jim Dempsey, and you're enjoying those tips and suggestions. And even some of you have remarked how you've enjoyed just the fun little episodes and movie clips that we put out there with uh, uh, fundraising and film on Wednesdays. And so continue to give me feedback down below in the comment section, uh, whether you're benefiting from these resources and whether you enjoy what you're hearing. But uh, I enjoy very much producing those and trying to give you the best resources in the fundraising world and nonprofit world out there. So uh, glad to help in that way. Our first question today is from Lori in Seattle, Washington. And Lori asks, we were approached by someone willing to help with our fundraising for a commission. It sounds low risk. What are your thoughts? Well, Lori, thank you very much for that question. And I've gotten that question quite a bit over the years because there are a lot of individuals and a lot of organizations that reach out, especially to small nonprofits who are struggling many with... Uh, with a lack of understanding or ability to be able to do fundraising. Maybe they're not tapping into the resources on channels like this and they just, they don't know what to do. And so someone comes in with answers or perceived answers and they're willing to do that for a commission, uh, which sounds low risk, as you said. It sounds like, well, if they don't raise the money, then they don't get a portion of the proceeds. How could that be wrong? Well, Lori, I'll tell you that that kind of procedure and that kind of method of raising money is considered by all professional fundraising organizations as unethical. Let me say that again. It's considered unethical. The Association for Fundraising Professionals considers any of that unethical, as does the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. Many of those organizations consider percentage-based um, commissions to be unethical. And let me explain a little bit why it is considered that way. The organizations were built with a mission, vision, and value. They were started, as your organization probably was, as my organization was, with a very important mission and vision. 
And as a result, the IRS allowed you the designation of a 501c3, 501c4, or other uh, um, recognized organization. And as a result, there is a trust factor in there. The government is trusting, and, and especially in, from the, the standpoint when they issue a, a, a tax exemption, you are, in a sense, being given that with the understanding that you would practice ethical standards in your performance of your, your duties, your responsibility, and achieving of your mission. When someone comes in and asks for a percentage of the gifts that they raise or the percentage of the proceeds, those organizations or individuals who are asking to do that have a different motive in most cases than you do as a nonprofit organization. They don't have the same mission, vision, and values. They may like or they may say they like or agree with your mission, vision, and values, but unfortunately it appears that their motivation is profit. They want to make money from your donors and your partners. They want to take a percentage of the money. So the partner or the donor believes that their money is going to the organization when in reality a portion of that money is going to pay the commission fee for an individual, an organization, a consultant. And that in it itself has, it, 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 it's not only considered unethical, but it, it doesn't, it, right there it doesn't feel right. And certainly you could, right now if you're watching this, you may be splitting hairs uh, crossing through this saying, well, yes, 100% will go to the organization. All we do is out of a different account or a different line item, we may pay that uh, solicitor. Well, unfortunately, it still is a portion that's coming out of the gift given. In many cases, the, the solicitor doesn't even tell the, uh, the partner or the donor that a portion is coming out of that. The organization oftentimes doesn't tell the donor or the partner. And when they do, the partner many times will be skeptical or even decide not to give. And I have heard of some just horror stories over the years. I remember a high profile Hollywood actress who had a had a organization and the the consulting firm was taking 95% of the gifts. So 5%, only 5% was going to the actual activities to accomplish the mission, vision, value of the organization. 95% of the gift was going to the solicitor. And that just doesn't set right with the um, with our partners and our donors. And in fact, uh, I read that article in the Wall Street Journal and that was pretty much the demise of that organization when it went public that that much of the money was going to solicitation. I know recently there was a a uh, very high profile nonprofit organization that helped um, uh, individuals who were um, injured in combat. And it was found that their fundraising costs were exceptionally high. Now that doesn't, that wasn't necessarily percentage or commission based, but um, their, their audience didn't take too kindly to having exorbitant fundraising costs. The normal fundraising costs, people are willing to accept anywhere from 5 to 30 percent uh, of that. 30 is pushing it, 25, uh, 20 to 25 is fairly normal, but uh, 30. But some organizations, and this one in particular, um, their fundraising costs were much higher than 30 percent. And so you really need to be careful if you have someone coming to you with a deal that sounds too good to be true, in a sense. The old adage, when it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Now, how do you solve this problem? 
Well, one of the things that the regulatory organizations do allow is paying bonuses. So if you have someone in your organization that does a great job, they're getting a, a standard fee, whether that be hourly, salaried position, or raising their own funding, you can authorize a bonus for that extra work. And it's sort of like, um, in a sense, tipping someone for doing above and beyond work. Um, now, you have to be careful that that bonus is also not exorbitant. And what, that, what I mean by that is that it could be one to two or three percent of, of their pay, but certainly not 50% of their pay. Um, our organization, as an example, caps out bonuses in, in single dollar amounts, and it's, it's relatively very small. It's enough to recognize someone's above and beyond work, but certainly not anything that would raise red flags of regulatory agencies or even of our donors or our partners. And so consider that. Also consider if you have someone who's doing a great job, consider increasing their, their normal pay, uh, whether that be hourly increase their, their normal pay um, and um, a couple percentage points uh, or increase their annual salary as a result, uh, upgrade their title and their responsibility and maybe also their their pay in that way. So those are some things to consider. I'm very glad that you asked this question because the last thing I would want any of you to do would be to perform any unethical practices or procedures or certainly to run afoul of the uh, Association of Fundraising Professionals or also the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. And whether your organization is a member of either of those organizations doesn't matter. Um, when an organization goes afoul of those kinds of things, um, you can, if that goes public and uh, the fact that you are violating uh, any of those standards, that could really backfire on you. So just please be careful on those. Well, that wraps up our question for the week. Uh, I'm so thankful that uh, we continue to get questions and uh, we're, we get so many these days that I really have to prioritize. And so I'm trying to answer as many of the questions on air. If not, I am answering every question, but some I've had to start to answer uh, either in the comment section, in emails, or also um, in, uh, in some of the other platforms. So definitely check us out on Facebook. We've got the Development Effectiveness Strategies Facebook group. We're on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. Once again, a lot of our people are really, really giving us great feedback on uh, some of our newer things that we're trying for providing resources out there on Instagram. You can always reach me at Development Effectiveness m at gmail.com and as always i wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded see you in the next video